Iranians here. So we are going to the gay shorts. It's called the Gay Scary Shorts. And so it's 6 7. It goes from 6 to 9, but from 6 mm -hmm. to 7 is a meet and greet. Yeah. And they're supposed to show some uh, gay inspired horror shorts. So yes. we're looking forward to it and we're here to support our friend yeah. who's uh, brought all of this together. Yeah. And we have our tickets already and it's hot outside. Let's go yeah. on inside, please. So these are the guys behind this wonderful event today. <laughs> there you go. One, two, three. Yay, thank you. So tell us more about the event today. So we originally were going to have um, our Down Syndrome Film Festival this weekend. And um, it just worked out this way that we are postponing it to March for um, World Down Syndrome Day, which will kick it off. So in lieu of that, which, um, in to back up, it's March 17th or 21st, 22nd, 23rd of 2025. But since we had the weekend reserve, we wanted to grab one of those three days. Right. And I said, it's October, it's Halloween time. Wouldn't it be fun to do, which we normally do gay shorts at this time of year right. so i said let's do horror gay shorts and i thought are there Perfect. enough horror gay shorts out there and then i did my research i met all these wonderful filmmakers online some of them are my friends out here already and voila i have two of them coming out for tonight's event and a special guest terry ray who of is course. the founder of the Bent Theater oh, out yes. here, the All Gay Theater here in uh, Palm Springs at the Palm Springs Cultural oh, Center. Wow. He's going to moderate. Hey, so go. we just whipped this up literally in a month, month and a half, I think. And uh, here we are. Yay. So I'm yeah, happy yeah. that we got on producer like Eye of the Desert was gracious enough to give us a spot and help plug it. So, and people like you that are here were ah, so gracious. Thank and so you. thankful. Right, congratulations. And the director, are the, sorry, the writer of Robin Williams' last film, oh. it's called Boulevard. This is Doug Douglas oh, Soundsby. He is here to also, we're going to spread the word in November. We're doing his, his screening for the film on November 16th. Oh, wow. To celebrate Pride Month. Here yeah, I, I, I saw that already on the, online. Yeah. yeah. So the director will be here and also Kathy Baker, who is in the film. Right. And so we got a lot of stuff. Yay. Yeah. All so right. Thank you for no, no, thank you. filming this for us. Thank you. Really, thank you so much. So we're waiting, we're at the, the event right now. So yeah, we I'm, I'm, I'm recording this as well. Oh, we're here on. Cheers. 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 Yeah. I'm good. Okay. I'll put this. Gay scary shorts. Can I see your scary shorts? They're not scary. They're not scary. <laughs> we had a wonderful pre party at my store, Dennis. You should have been there. Oh. Uh, uh, no. It was fun. Yeah, but it's I'm 
we know we would have. It was, a, it was a nice gathering, it really was. My house yeah. made these beautiful trays of food that were amazing. Wow. Yeah, So now we're going into the movie. It starts at seven. So we will report on it yeah. after we see them. So it's going to be two hours. I don't know how many A short films, short films yeah. are going to be shot, but it's here. know us if, if you don't know us we're the filmmakers gallery i'm paul this is steven i'm steven and we're so grateful so grateful to have all you wonderful people that we know and some of we some of the people we just met tonight so thank you all for being here yes thank you and um we just did to our first annual yay scary shorts so let's, let's give it up for that so one of the films I must add is international. It's all the way from New Zealand. New Zealand. You have the premiere. Director Director Chaz Harris. I connected with via YouTube. And then I found him on Instagram and we start chatting and he's so excited about tonight. And he wanted to tell everybody, which you'll see him up on the screen in just a minute, um, how thrilled he is because this is the US premiere of this film tonight. It's the first one that we're gonna see. So for that, that's huge, right? And we want to thank uh, a couple of special sponsors, uh, Ted Hain and the Mary Pickford Theater Crew. Always them, they do a great job. They're fantastic. And a big thing, uh, Ron Brown. And Ron Russell Brown Blackburn. and Russell. Where are you guys? Blackburn. There they are up there. Thank you guys. They're our guys. premier sponsors for tonight's event. They hosted the VIP pre party from four to six at their new location next to the tool shed. So if you haven't seen their place, it's fabulous. It goes Amazing through. stuff. Pay them a visit. Uh, without the further ado, like we always say, we hope you enjoy tonight's event, the gay, scary shorts. Let's give it up. Thank you so much. We'll jump out of your seats guaranteed. The filmmakers gallery have graciously invited me to be your moderator for the Q&A asking tonight's scary gay short films. Um, you might know me from the gay theater here in town, The Bent. I'm the managing director there. Made in Wellington, New Zealand in 2022. The film screened at multiple international film festivals, but this tonight is the US premiere. Thanks to the Filmmakers Gallery for including it in the lineup of these gay scary shorts, and I really hope you enjoy it. I wish you all a queer and spooky night. Um, yeah, I was really excited when Paul reached out because this was a really fun short to, sh uh, to shoot for us, and we did it a couple years ago. And uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. And unfortunately, I can't I can't be there today because I'm on set shooting a film. And uh, yeah, we're just starting today, so everything's kind of chaos mode. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys all enjoy this short. It's a pretty funky little thing that we put together, and I think you'll probably, by the end, you'll understand why it's playing at that festival. But for, uh, yeah, wish I could be there. Um, hope you enjoy. And this is Brandon Christensen, live from the set of my new movie, saying, enjoy Torture Park. The Gay Scary Shorts, produced by the Filmmakers Gallery. My name is Adam Bucci, and along with my husband, Adam Huss, we have produced and starred in some of the films that you'll see tonight. Um, the Tribe, I Stakes, Dev Apocalypse, Love and Kill You, and Strangers of the Night. Uh, thank you, Stephen and Paul, for wanting to showcase some of our films. Um, we're so appreciative, and we so wish we could be there tonight. I hope you all have a wonderful, scary, and gay time. Uh, can't wait to hear how it goes. Have a good night. Happy Halloween. Hi, my name is Richard Lupersong, 
I just wanted to welcome you all to the Mary Pickford Theater for the Gay Scary Shorts program. Huge shout out to Paul and Steven for throwing this event and thank you for including me in this program. I wish I could be there, but I hope you all enjoy the show. Stay spooky. Howdy, this is Rod Estella. I'm the writer and director of Steam. Uh, I'm very excited to show you guys my film, and I hope you guys have a great and scary time. Thank you. The things we do to America. This is a movie that came about from my own personal experience in going to Christian conversion therapy. Ultimately, that didn't work out for me, and I was able to come out and uh, find freedom. But it made me wonder, what if somebody didn't recover from that, and they went further and further? Could conversion therapy create a serial killer? And uh, not to surprise, not to ruin the movie for you, but that's sort of the basis of this. Is as gay men, we often uh, shove things further and deeper down and really struggle to unlock a lot of the emotional truths and the trauma that we've been through about what the closet is. And I thought it'd be a really great way to express those feelings and uh, you know have a little fun. So thanks for being here, and uh, I hope you enjoy. And wanted to say a special thank you to Paul and Stephen at the Filmmakers Gallery. Hope you all enjoy it. Thank you. And has won eight awards already in multiple film festivals around the world. He is currently working on two films. Please welcome Amir. Come on down. Yeah. The next filmmaker has had his work screened at festivals around the world, including Cannes, Tribeca, Toronto, Frameline, and Outfest and he attended the American Film Institute and received an MFA. Uh, come on down, Matthew Lynn. Woo. So I'll pass off the mic to you. Oh, I get the mic condom. <laughs> I want to spread COVID. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Let's hear it for these guys one more time. Yeah. I'm glad there's a little space between our chairs because I'm scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> that last one was creepy. <laughs> What's going on in your brain? In my brain? Mm hmm. That was actually based off of the right. sword. Uh, that was sort of based off of a true story that happened with me. I was alone up in Big Bear. I went through a breakup. I was using Grindr and someone was actually driving around and tracked where I went and it was like a catfish situation and they wouldn't leave the front door for a while. So once I went through that experience, I was kind of inspired to create this film. Um, and it's twofold. It's like obviously Stranger Danger is a surface level, but I think the second layer is uh, what happens when you commodify human needs like loneliness and desire and sex um, and what part you metaphorically or in this case physically dies. So. And you, were you talking about there was a feature of this you're working on? Yeah, uh, we already finished writing it. It's called Sweetheart. Uh, it's a lot more fun, faster paced. There's a group situation, but still using the app as like a plot device and still that main character. Who does not die? He actually continues. To Thank God. <laughs> so this is more of like a proof of concept in a way, like a short kind of opening kill sequence. I was trying to experiment, kind of learn my craft and style with it. So. Are you Iranian? Uh, I, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of Iranian people in Los Angeles, at least. But I do think that experience of you know people using the adjectives like exotic to describe someone. These are very like small microaggressions that people experience. Um, I didn't want it to be blasted front and center, but at least there are some elements of like his identity represented in the film. And you don't often see uh, LGBTQ Middle Eastern representation. Yeah, in, in, in Iran, it's is it illegal? It's a death penalty. Yeah. Death penalty. Yeah. There's people out there. Yeah. So that's. Uh, do you feel some kind of obligation to represent because of that? Uh, no, but I think like the tagline in my film is there are no safe places or spaces and I think, you know, it's, I made this film at a time when I think our rights are being uh, attacked left and right and I felt like no one was saying anything so this to me was kind of like a shouting and screaming like wake up people um, by using really visceral violent imagery. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're being attacked. <laughs> so like what are we? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, have you? Uh, conversion therapy? Did you go through it? I did. Explain. Um, well, it wasn't as traumatic as what you saw in the movie, but uh, yeah, I did do conversion therapy and all that fun jazz trying to be straight. I was in ministry and, you know, I was going to have to marry a woman, so let's figure this out. It's not working, so... Did you do it on your own or did you... No, I went to, like, a program. I mean, you you volunteered to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I, and I voluntarily left, so that was great. And it worked, apparently. It it worked. <laughs> I, I made it Palm Springs. I'm clearly a Springs. <laughs> wow. You have quite a lot of hyphenates in your career. Thank you. And uh, I, I, I watched your um, demo, cinematographer, on a zillion things. And I, I just, when I was watching your stuff, it was so gorgeous. I, I, I wondered, is there a particular moment in your career that you go, Oh my God! I, I I can't believe I'm I'm doing this, watching this moment. To go home to the theater I grew up in with my dad and brother, and we go see movies all the time. And uh, I got to see it with my nephew, who just come out as gay, and uh, watch it on the movie theater screen with bad audio, just like a hometown movie theater, um, with my whole family. So that yeah, it was like this is real. This is like. A real thing. You're a movie maker. I, the, but you know, as my mom said when I got the job, she's like, "You're a real filmmaker now." I'm like, thanks, mom. For the past eight years, I was. <laughs> and you and I'm here. It snowed and Nick there just for your movie. Yeah, <laughs> the day before we were actually supposed to go up, there was a huge snowstorm and all the roads to Big Bear were closed. And that morning, the day we were supposed to drive up, they opened again. So luckily, everything worked out, and we got great production value. The snow. That's great. And all those shots were actually like drone shots that we took. So wow, it's beautiful. Matthew, was um, what's the meaning behind the animals in yours, like the costumes? What do you think the meaning is? I like <laughs> that wolf. Um, no, it's it's funny because oftentimes we um, we we put our gayness or closetedness into a representation of some sort of terrible figure. And originally, this was a comedy. And it was this comedy about this guy, and then I realized, like, well, no, that's pretty dark. And uh, so the whole, uh, like, you see, there's a little moments of dark comedy with the guy in the, the bear outfit in the bathroom and stuff like that. It's like, we we as gay men often have uh, fetishes, and it's amazing that, you know, you talk about even in a, a minority community, we have these minorities within minorities that we never really talk about. And it, I think it's really interesting to, like, realize that everybody has fears and pains and uh, anxieties and they all come out in these interesting forms because we are sexual creatures right and we live in a society not to I'm diatribe but we live in a society that uh, you know like shuns that and closes it off and we have to find some way to express it and I just thought like that's kind of weird like why doesn't he have a, a weird like a, a, a animal fetish I don't know like, and the taxidermy like preserving his victims yeah yeah, yeah. that was the, the whole shtick for the uh, him as a serial killer he would uh, like preserve his victims and they would be statues basically to this evil gayness that exists wow you scare me you both scare me <laughs> things we think about when we're alone <laughs> what's coming up um, well, we have all enjoyed the filmmaker apocalypse that was this past year with the strikes and the entire industry shutting down. But uh, things are starting to pick back up. Uh, things are going well. Uh, I have a feature with Paramount in the spring, so I'm excited Ooh, about that. Ooh, that's nice. What's, give uh, us a little hint. I, um, a tiny it's, little hint? It's, it's a choose-your-own-adventure, is what I'll say. Is it got any gay content to it? Uh, no. Okay. Well, I don't know at this point. Let's put it that way. Uh, but then, uh, yeah, I've got a few features that are in the pipeline for the end of the year, and yeah, just as one does when one's busy. Yeah, okay. Pay the bills. Come here. Uh, well, as I mentioned, working on the feature, so we just got Darren Stein as an executive producer who made the film Jawbreaker in 1999. Uh, the film's going to be very like stylized in the 90s, so that's why we we had him on board, and we're looking to go into production November of 2025 on that. And then I'm also uh, producing a feature film. It's a psychological body horror film, also LGBTQ. Uh, body horror? Body horror. What is that? Um, so I don't know if anyone's seen the movie The Substance, but it's essentially yes, yes. movies that 
kind of use a uh, visual imagery of like body gore to make some sort oh, of gore mess. or whore. Yeah. <laughs> <Gore. laughs> I was thinking I've just looked in the mirror. There's some body horror going on. Okay. So two feature films and most likely one more uh, experimental short coming soon. That's great. Now, and you're kind of are you a new filmmaker, right? I am. I I did direct probably 40 campaigns on Netflix, but it was all unscripted for their social media. But I think I learned how to manage talent, how to manage crews, um, how to organize with budgets and stakeholders. So I was kind of building that foundation without even realizing it. So this is actually, your first time? This is my first film. That's amazing. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. Um, but I think one thing to say is what I love about horror is it's oftentimes our way of processing trauma or something hard in a creative and metaphorical way. So that's why I love the genre so much, and I think it's so underrated, is you can really take uh, horrible things and creatively kind of work through that process. So that's your that's your favorite genre for? Yes. Wow. <laughs> and you work in different genres. I work where they pay me, so... Um, yes, but no, I love horror for the very same reason. Like, you even talked about your film with being an Iranian and then all the exotic and stuff, and the whole, uh, the whole like, B story of going to the other guy's party and stuff like that. Like, like as gay men, we don't appreciate the, the struggles that our own community deals with oftentimes, and I really appreciate it you put that in your film. That's great. Hey, does anybody have any questions? I do. Okay. Johnny, go ahead. First of all, are all filmmakers this handsome? <laughs> <laughs> I am the wrong business. Well, we have we have two, and uh, the answer is yes, right? <laughs> That's a very deep question. You have something else? <laughs> it's called unemployment. It's great for gym membership. This <laughs> uh, Yes, I thought it was a perfect. Uh, the LGBTQ plus community was perfect match for horror or slasher or scary or whatever you want to call this. Um, because when I was watching especially Steam, there are certain elements of it that are could be scary for someone who's not gay. Like sticking your thing in a hole that you don't know what's going on behind it. Could see that's like this. It's Ooh. always scary to stick your thing in a hole, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's hooked up like it's it's the unbalanced factor put behind it. And then you throw that scary movie on, on top of it. I thought it was a perfect match. Like, why wasn't this done 100 years ago? I mean, it's, it's that, really bad. That's the same director of, has anybody seen it? Skull? It's, it was from Out Outfest. And it's a, and you have to be a work while you short. It's the same director as Skull. If you've never seen it, it's on YouTube. Like bathroom stalls? It's just called stalls, yes, bathroom stalls. <laughs> and it's scary. And, and well, it's not scary, but it's humorous. Wow. So, yes. You know what? I'm, uh, what's your name on the left? Amir? Uh, Amir. You look like Afghan. <laughs> Were you in your own movie? What is it? Were you in your own movie, Slasher? Uh, I would say the character was loosely based on me, but then sort of evolved. But it wasn't yeah. you? No, that was not but me. I, I, I like how you did, uh, the act was called Torso, and at the end, the, the slasher left the torso. Yes, he, <laughs> that was very intentional, so yeah, he became essentially how, how he presented. Yeah. And I, I got your little, um, nod, just like, um, home sweet home. That one is my happy place. I love that one so much. Yeah. And I caught that. But I had a question for both of you. Um, as filmmakers and as directors, what did you gentlemen think of the other shorts by the other directors? Oh, I think it's a great question. I love them. I love watching other people's films, and I especially love watching a short block because it's such like a creative overload of all different people's like styles and approaches and I'm just mentally taking notes left and right. So like there were so, so many elements about Steam that I loved. Um, I love the, the two guys that did a bunch of the films that were featured and like their sense of humor it was hilarious. I thought it was great. I loved your film. I thought it was so creepy and dark and like 
the scene where he's just, they're facing each other, like a face-off. Like, there's so much tension, but it's in such a normal setting that it really, like, is jarring in that way. Um, so I love it. I'm, I'm constantly inspired by watching other people's work. And seeing this whole, like, repertoire of films, it's just awesome to see, like, more LGBTQ people getting into, like, the horror filmmaking space and having that representation shown. I think, like, we need more of that in the genre space. Well, and I, I think to piggyback on that, like the, the horror space has always been a perfect place for the LGBT community because horror and ecstasy and fear, all these emotions like live in a very similar space in our mind. And as, you know, LGBT people, we often have to face things that, you know, a straight person necessarily doesn't even have to have a question in their life. And how do we, where do we put that? And how do we, how do we place that in the universe? And I think that's why there's a lot of very famous, uh, horror movies that were directed by gay men or were involved with the gay community. I mean, I, I immediately think of Nightmare on Elm Street 2. It's a perfect reference. Uh, but anyway, to your question, um, I really enjoyed it. it. It was funny, the the torture porn one was the one that stuck out to me more than any other. I was just like, that's a cool idea. Like, if you're in a BDSM sort of situation as a, as a couple, like, where do you take that too far? And at what point from the outside perspective is it, you know, who is it a horror experience like and we're expressing our trauma and things like that it just really clicked with me but i, I thought overall the steam was also really good i like the uh the um perspective on like that experience of like again eroticism and horror all coming together you know glory holes are never i mean those things make me nervous but you know <laughs> <laughs> no i thought it was i thought it was a really good collection you guys you did a wonderful job picking these out and there is a lesson to learn from your film if you're going to hook up and there's plastic on the floor, uh, go home. Uh, <laughs> right? Just go home. Uh, quickly. <laughs> Dexter awaits. One thing that's really interesting is the lengths of danger we put ourselves in for sexual opportunities. Yes. And it kind of originates to like, to even be gay was dangerous back in, in the past. And this is almost like a metaphor of that evolution where it's like, you know, even though it may be like slightly different nowadays, there were so many dangers before that were so real and now they're like being processed through film like in these scenarios. Every hookup that you, like somebody comes to your house, there's always the possibility you could get murdered. Or we, we can right. you to put ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> that. it's like there's always that slight thing of like, what if they're here to kill me? But in the past, there were other dangers that were super real. I mean, yeah. you know, whether it was like the HIV AIDS epidemic or being outed or being arrested or being, you know, killed like a hate crime. Like there were so many like very real prevalent dangers. Exactly. Um, and it's just like, you know, but we persevere. So. Yeah, here we here we be. Help us make better movies. Yeah. Any? Oh, yes. What, uh, Alan? Yes. Um, I just wanted to say that I think we um, eroticize our fears when we're doing an SM, BMD type of thing, and you always like you were saying before, where you wonder how far you're going, and in a movie, you can go as far as you are fearing. We all fear. Oh my God, am I really on tie down? This is supposed to be fun. I'm not even sure I know the person that's in charge here. And it's that's part of the eroticism and part of the adrenaline rush. But ah, and it's also like the fear is also part of the eroticism. And so that's what happens in these films and watching. It's a real rush. Great job, you guys. Thank you. Did you have another one? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um years ago. Wasn't there a grinder murder? Like, he was picking up guys on grinder and killing them? Anyone remember this? It's the Craigslist murder. It was Craigslist. It was Craigslist. And I think they were killing women. Oh, okay. Oh, the yeah. women? Right. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was grinder and it was men. See how my head works? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody needs to make that. But I was wondering if maybe that had inspired Peter at all. Even though he told us his real true life story is what he spun off of the scary film. I just thought of that while I was watching your film, especially. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's happened, you know? Like, yeah. I'm sure there have been scenarios. There, there always could be, so. Yeah, nothing yeah. scarier, but yes. Anyway, I just want to ask, what is the feedback from people that have seen these horror stories? Do they love them, or do they make them very uneasy and say, I don't like this stand on what you direct and what you've written or whatever? Is it positive, or is it mixed? 
I feel like mine are all over the place. Some people <laughs> hate that I killed off the character at the end. Some people love it and they're like, the torso's the best part. <laughs> um, but I just stay true to my creative vision and don't let other people influence it. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was interesting with things. We, I, we shot that a week before uh, lockdown. Um, and so, like, it, it, we went through multiple drafts of a script for a feature, used it as a proof of concept. Ultimately, uh, it just seemed like people didn't want to tell the story of a gay man who's a serial killer. Like, it was just, which ironically now we have stuff that's out that is exactly that. But three years ago, we were in a very different place in the industry. Uh, everybody wanted to make like a, a father son story where the serial killer is sort of a B character. So um, it makes a great short, but uh, ultimately it didn't end up being a feature. What, what's their festival journey? How, how have they done festivals? Uh, we opened at Screenfest one year ago, uh, actually today, which is kind of cool. So it's a one year anniversary. And then we played in about uh, 25, 26. That's a lot. Yeah, and I actually like closed the door on it. I was ready to kind of move forward, but um, I was reached out to and I really liked that they were doing this out in Palm Springs, so kind of brought it back. Um, I did a festival journey like two years ago with this, and so um, there was 10, 15 festivals I think it went to, and then of course Paul and Steven reached out and asked if they could bring it to the apartment, so. So they've done well, both of them. It was nice to see it on the big screen again. Thanks, guys. Yes. I I guess we we should probably wrap it up. Does anybody have a a question still? I had a question for you. Um, Could you comment on the uh, scene between the son and the father? Because the son showed him a picture. He says, you know, uh, this is your friend. So did he know his father was gay or? What do you think? I, I had a feeling that the son is keeping his secret. So I, but. You I just wanted to express the feeling of what it's like to be a closeted man and have a child and, you know, maybe have that late night where you're by yourself and then your kid picks up your phone at 7 a.m. and sees a picture that he wasn't supposed to see. Mm-hmm. That's fear, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes. You mentioned earlier that Where's the fine line that start going into torso or to a guy who wears taxidermy mask? Like, where where do we start going from reality into sort of this fantasy? And how do you choose sort of blur or find that balance to sort of blur those two things together? Um. Well, we always need a manifestation of evil, right? And I I don't think it's really far beyond anything we've seen. I mean. We've seen serial killers, serial killers in the past that have done horrible things to people. You know, uh, Gacy immediately comes to mind. I don't, uh, but you know, oftentimes it's the the deepest, darkest parts of ourselves that you know are the most real. I mean, I don't think I'm going to put on a bear mask and go around and murder anybody, but there's definitely parts of me that you know my gay experience somehow is represented in that way, um, and the fears and anxieties of being in the Christian church or the Baptist church more specifically and you know dealing with the anxieties of living in a world where if anybody knew who you were or found out anything I mean I worked in the church full time so it was like my every day was constant fear and anxiety and like how do you express that so I, I always feel the film what I love is you we have an ability to to uh, metaphorically represent you know those internal struggles I don't think there is a limit. I think it's however someone processes something creatively and whatever metaphorical messages rise to the top, like it's like make your art. So I don't think there really is a a fine line of like where that is. I think it's just dependent on that storyteller and their story to tell. Well, I say thank you to Paul and Steven for choosing all these wonderful films. Yes. And it is an opportunity to, to experience something like this. It's a, a unique thing. And for our filmmakers showing up for us so that we can drill you for information. Thank you both. And, and, <laughs> yes. And thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you guys for being here. We really appreciate it.
face. Which made the brain see the Did you like that? Oh, we did. Oh, good to see you guys. It was much better than I thought it was going to be. Yes. Really? Because some of the ones you see on YouTube, they're really No, but I love the shorts. We're long time lovers. Yeah. We're body horse, by the way, for a long time. I thought they would raise these dogs were much better yeah. than I thought, really. Great collection, a lot of variety. It was dark, but really entertaining. And you should see these movies if you have a chance. Yes. Uh, but horror films, so you gotta like horror films. <laughs> they're pretty good. I like the campy ones too by Adam and Adam. Oh, yeah. Right. That's yeah. Good. The two Adams. Two Adams. I love that. All right. Good night. Good night. Till the next gay short scary. Yep, we'll see Summer. you. <laughs> bye bye.